It's been three weeks since I got my diabetes diagnosis and I wanted to check in and let you know how things have been going. I decided to do it here at my favorite place or one of my favorite places, which is my barn, instead of doing it via a drive time video. I'm glad you're here. Stay tuned so you can find out what the last three weeks have held. All I have to say is this process has been quite the learning experience. Very early into the process, I was overwhelmed by what the reality of this diagnosis meant. So what I ended up doing is reaching out to people I knew who had some experience with the disease itself, either having been diagnosed with it and dealing with it for some years, or being in a situation of having to care for somebody who has dealt with the disease for a long time. And that would be a first tip, is that if you receive a diabetes diagnosis, reach out to someone you know and trust so that you can talk through this. When you start doing searches on the internet, the, the information is overwhelming. And I can honestly say that at this point, I still haven't gone through all of the information that's out there to really have a firm grasp of what the reality of things are. But by all means, just having that personal support from somebody who knows and who's been down this path has been one of the most helpful things that I've experienced since getting this diagnosis. So the eating strategy that I have approached has been somewhat twofold. The first has been that my husband and I reinstituted our intermittent fasting. This is something that we had started last year. In fact, you'll see some videos on my channel where we actually started that process and I kind of had a hard stop in terms of pursuing that. But we reinstituted that where in most cases I stop my eating by 8 p.m. at night and I start again at noon the next day. Part of the reason I do that is because it allows me to sleep through most of my uh, non-eating window. And then it also, by pushing it up to that eight o'clock time frame, it's helped me conquer those late night eating challenges that I have always faced throughout my life. However, I think that what I have learned since this diagnosis is that Part of the reason why I had that late night eating challenge really had to do with what was going on with my blood sugars. The other strategy that we have approached has been to pursue a low carb diet. Now my husband has always been a proponent of the low carb diet. I have pursued that, trying to be really intentional about knowing what it is I'm putting in my mouth. I've stayed away from, or I have attempted to stay away from processed foods or foods that have added sugars and focus on consuming whole foods. One of the quandaries that I've been presented with and I'm still in the process of researching is how to maintain a low carb diet, but then how that marries up to some of the literature that I've seen that says that certain beans helps lower your blood sugar. And Based on my understanding, if you're on a low carb diet, you're not eating beans, but if I've got a blood sugar issue, then I wanna eat those foods that's going to reduce my blood sugar, but it doesn't align with a low carb diet. One of the strategies that I've learned is very beneficial in figuring out how foods impact your body and impact your blood sugar is testing your blood sugar before you eat and then a good two hours after to check to see how that particular food or that particular meal impacts your blood sugar. If it results in a 30, I guess 30 point or more spike in your blood sugar, that's an indication that you don't need to be eating that particular food. But if it's under 30, that lets you know that that is a food that doesn't cause a high blood sugar spike. So my plan is with these beans is to just do that comparison. I'm going to test my blood sugar before I eat a particular bean, especially like a garbanzo bean because I love garbanzo beans and salads. And then I'll check it two hours afterwards and if it results in a huge spike, then I know whether or not that's helpful to me. And then I'm going to evaluate what those numbers look like over time if there's not a huge spike and I continue to eat them to see if I'm seeing an incremental decrease in my blood sugar. One lesson I've learned is the importance of reading 
labels. The other night, I was coming home after having spent a weekend out of town with my mom. I knew when I got home, I wasn't gonna have time to put on a big productive meal. I decided to try to cook some ground turkey, serve it with a no sugar added off the shelf tomato sauce over cauliflower pasta. I think I looked at the label on the front more than I did the label on the back. The result of that was after eating that meal, instead of seeing that steady decrease in, especially my morning blood sugar numbers, it was going back up. It wasn't as high as it was when I first started checking my blood sugar, but I, it, there was a good 20 point difference between my morning blood sugar and my, um, what, it had, what it had been. At one point, I even had my blood sugar during the day down to 97, which is, you know, the goal is to be under 100. And consuming that meal really did throw things for a loop. I'm in the process of kind of getting that out of my system. Today, when I woke up, my blood sugar was again getting lower than what it had been and I'm kind of monitoring throughout the course of today to see how it continues to decrease as I go about my regular day of eating. So that speaks to the progress I've experienced. One is that I've seen a reduction in my blood sugar at different times of the day, which is a positive. The other is I've learned and grown my understanding about how to evaluate foods and how it impacts my body. I'm sleeping better, and with that, Part of what's contributed to my sleeping better, I believe, is a reduction, one of the symptoms of diabetes, and that is the need to urinate frequently, especially during the night. Getting a little personal here, but I had gotten to the point where probably every two to three hours throughout the course of the night, I would get up and have to go to the bathroom, and I just, fig I just figured that was because I got an old bladder. But the last couple of nights, I've slept well through the night, eight, seven, eight hours before waking. And so I, I consider that progress. And the result is, is I'm sleeping better and I'm rested. The other thing that I'm experiencing is I'm not as fatigued. My joints aren't, and my body extremities are not hurting as much as they used to. It used to be when I would get up from my hips down, my body hurt so bad. And I had to kind of like adjust myself like I've seen my sisters and friends who've had hip replacements or knee replacements, which I've not had, um, kind of adjust to get things in place before they could continue to walk. That has reduced probably by about 50%. I still feel a little bit of whatever that feeling is, but it's not nearly as debilitating as it had been. And I've lost about 12 pounds. Oh, and the jeans I'm wearing today is a pair of jeans that I not too long ago couldn't get into. So I'm seeing a lot of progress. I'm not using any paid product. I'm not um, doing any kind of special meals. My doctor did prescribe Ozempic, and that's another funny story because he prescribed it. We talked about prescribing it initially to help me lose weight. And then when my A1C numbers were up, he at first suggested just a low starch diet. And I was the one that raised the issue again about, oh, do we want to do the Ozempic thing? And he prescribed it. But I decided, and this is kind of, you know, the dysfunction of self-image and weight loss and that sort of thing. I was willing to start it when I was using it to lose weight because I knew that at some point in time I could get off of it if I wanted to, but I'm reluctant to start it as a solution to diabetes because if I do that, then it may very well be something that I would have to stay on for the rest of my life. And I'm not ready to do that yet. So my goal is to hold off on doing that prescription until I go back mid-April to get my A1Cs checked. And um, if my numbers are still a problem, then maybe I will evaluate whether I need to do that to, get a, to help me get to where I wanna be. Um, but if it's not, I'm just going to continue doing what I've been doing and being mindful about what I'm eating, making sure it's more whole foods, avoiding those white starches and those processed foods and those added sugars, and um, seeing if it can help me have a healthier lifestyle. So stay with me. I'll check back in. 
I guess the thing that I would encourage you to do is don't be like me. I always told myself, Allison, you need to either take care of your health while you have a choice or wait and do it when you have to. And now I'm at a point where I have to and I wish I had done it when I had a choice. And so I just would encourage you now, if there's anything going on with you health-wise, do it while you can, as opposed to waiting until you have to. Thanks for joining me. If this has been valuable to you, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell icon so that you can be notified when a new video comes out. My goal is to present a, or post a video every Saturday, and I would really love for you to be a part of this journey. And if it helps you be healthier, then my mission here has been accomplished. So I'm gonna go clean stalls now. I won't take a picture of them beforehand because they are nasty, but maybe afterwards. Thanks for being here. Have a great day.